Recognize what you are about to see is one of the wildest finishes to a football game ever. Fiesta Bowl, Oklahoma and Boise State. If Rocky Balboa were a football team, he is the Broncos. And well, Sooner football is Apollo Creed, Clubber Lang, and Ivan Drago combined. And they've got Adrian Peterson back from the collarbone problem. Boise State led 21 to 10 at the half, but here it is late fourth quarter. Oklahoma down eight. Paul Thompson, Quentin Cheney. Oklahoma needs the two-point conversion to tie. And you're going to need to keep your head down for a while because here's the first attempt. The pass sails high. Oh, pass interference called on Orlando Scandrick. And Oklahoma going to get a second chance. And a second chance. Paul Thompson, same place. Jermaine Gresham catches it, but there's a flag for an illegal shift. Uh, one shot ain't enough, Jack. You better make it three. And on the third try, Thompson to Joaquin Iglesias. No flag. Game tied. We're going to overtime. But Jared Zabransky's got ideas about a comeback. Under two minutes to play, and he's going to want that pass back. Marcus Walker, and he's got reservations for six. Ball game over. Oklahoma wins 35-28. Nice effort. But hold on, young fella. Final seconds. Fourth and 18. Zabransky to Dryzen James. Pitches back to Jared Rapp. Amazing. ESU coach Chris Peterson said his backup quarterbacks told him to call this play. Yeah, call it's one thing, but executing it is a whole nother. The hook and ladder. We're tied at 35. We go to overtime after 22 points in the final 90 seconds of regulation. Oklahoma gets the ball first, their first play. Adrian Peterson, 77 yards. And now it's finally over because Oklahoma, you know, you, they're not going to come back from that. And now fourth down. Boise State, what are they? That's Sabransky, the quarterback in motion. That's Vinny Beretta, the former walk-on wide receiver to the big tight end Derek Schumann from Eagle, Idaho. And then Chris Peterson says, we're going to two pops. He says, what's in the water in Southern Idaho? And on the two-point conversion, what is in this play? Sabransky behind the back handoff to Ian Johnson. And they said that they said because Oklahoma, they'd seen the play had they run it regular. And then Johnson runs over and proposes to his girlfriend. She said, yes, Coach Peterson, how can you top this? You know, it was just awesome to see those guys continue to compete. I think if there's one thing that we just talk about and preach and harp day in and day out is being a great competitor and just never say and die. I'm just so happy for my guys. You know, this was, this was an unbelievable game. You know, this probably goes down in the history of college football. As, you know, it can be argued as the best game ever. And uh, you know, to have that feeling that you that you got that you pulled it off, and you know, your guys believed in you all the way to the end. It's just unbelievable. Well, he's not going to get an argument out of us. Uh, it, and being reported as the greatest sporting, sporting triumph in the history of the state of Idaho, the Broncos become the fifth team since the BCS began in 1998 to go undefeated and not win the national championship. This was only the fourth time in the nine-season history of the BCS that a game went to overtime. Rose Bowl in Pasadena, Michigan and USC. Before the game, a moment of silence for former President Gerald Ford, who was named most valuable player on Michigan's 1934 team. He was close with Bo Schembechler, who was remembered in part with the sticker on the Wolverine helmets. Michigan's only loss to Ohio State this season. USC dropped by Oregon State and UCLA. First quarter, no score. Third and nine for the Trojans. John David Booty slant pass. Dwayne Jarrett, who becomes USC's career leader in receptions. That's 208 passes. Terry Colbert on that list. USC would kick a field goal. Second quarter, USC in Michigan territory. He's 6'5", 245. Sean Crable, he got highlighted. He didn't get blocked, and that's not fair to Booty, who fumbles. Allen Branch recovers this game tied at three at the half. Third quarter, Michigan's first possession of the half. Chad Henney, screen pass intercepted by Lawrence Jackson. That pass intended for Mike Hart. Take another look. Jackson, from his defensive end position, he reads the screen and says, I'm not going anywhere. Drops off big mitts on the football. Big turnover ensuing USC possession booty post to Jarrett 25 yards down to the Michigan two this play going to be reviewed and you take another look and the call on the field will stand they rule Jarrett's knee hit the ground before the ball came loose it's first and goal USC very next play booty play action rolls right Chris McFoy nicknamed bobble no bobble there it's 10-3 Trojans as for Michigan's Mike Hart there was no room at the end. Came in as the nation's only running back with at least 90 yards rushing in every game this season. 47 yards on 17 carries. Later in third, Booty, Steve Smith, slant. And Smith breaks two tackles, takes it down to the Wolverine 22-yard line. The very next play, Booty, Jarrett, 
And another tackle broken. 22 yards, touchdown, 16-3 Trojans. They would miss the extra point. Fourth quarter, 19-3. Penny to Adrian Arrington, 11-yard touchdown. Michigan trails 19-11 after a two-point conversion. Penny threw for 309 yards. Ensuing USC possession. Booty, 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 throwing everywhere. Had to get it in. Jarrett over the top, 62-yard touchdown. 25-11, USC missing the extra point. Booty, 391 yards. Take another look at this. One of the two people that Jarrett's gonna run by is All-American cornerback Leon Hall. And there can only be one answer to this. That he should be playing on Sundays? Well, that, he's gonna have to answer that question, but he's clearly wearing PF flyers. Jarrett, 11 catches, 205 yards, two touchdowns. USC not done. Booty to Steve Smith, end zone, seven yards. Trojans go on to win 32 to 18. Pete Carroll, take a bath. John David Booty, lead the band. Coach, you're the program leader. This program for a long time has been a second half program. We've been able to find ways to find an energy and a, and a juice in the second half. They just weren't going to let it happen. The, the guys in the locker room were crazy and nuts, and they wanted to get back out here and win the game. Uh, and we decided to throw the football a lot. John David and Dwayne and Stevie and all those guys went nuts, and we had a heck of a second half. The coaches just said, you know, we're just going to you know, air it out more. And, uh, you know, that's what, we, that's what we did in the second half. That's why you've seen the difference in, you know, us putting up points. You know, first half, we was a little bit more conservative just to get a feel of the game. And, uh, you know, second half, we just uh, let it loose let it all out. It's a great disappointment, but we uh, we give SC all the credit. They did a great job uh, defensively, and we just couldn't get anything going on offensively, turn the ball over. So uh, they, did, they did a great job. Uh, USC beats Michigan in the granddaddy of them all for the second time in four years, each win coming in a similar fashion. Trojans won both games by 14 points, limited Michigan's offense to nearly the same amount of offense, but unlike three years ago, USC won't be clinching a share of the national championship. Gator Bowl was the most entertaining New Year's Day game until the whole Oklahoma-Boise State thing. Steve Slayton, part of the second-ranked rushing offense in the land. He was on the bench because of a deep thigh bruise, but Calvin Johnson, he put on a show. How about Taylor Bennett in for Reggie Ball, who was sidelined by academic issues. Johnson, a career-high 186 yards receiving. He said he'll decide soon about the NFL. He's the ACC Player of the Year, the Bolitnikoff Award winner. It was Bennett who looked like a star here as he finds the other Johnson, as in James. Bennett throws for 326. Georgia Tech was up by 18 at that point, and in the third quarter, they're up 18 again, 35-17, but comebacks have been the theme of this bowl season. It's Pat White up top to Tito Gonzalez. Five catches all year, no touchdowns. Got a touchdown now. And West Virginia on the comeback trail, but check this out. The old sleeper play, Dan Moses, the Remington Award winner, is the top center in the land. Give him an Oscar as he pretends to be asleep while Gonzalez is taking it to the paint later in the third quarter. White, no more for what he does with his feet than for his arm, but he zings it with his left arm to Brandon Miles. Touchdown, it's a four-point game. Then on the ensuing kickoff, Pat McAfee hits a knuckler. West Virginia would pounce on it. And as the kids in Morgantown say, let's go Mountaineers, let's go drink some beers. How about let's go to the end zone and complete the comeback. White banged up with all kinds of injuries. Coach Rod said he willed us to victory. 145 yards on the ground. West Virginia now back on top by three. Georgia Tech, Bennett, I, I mentioned he played so well, kind of got crossed up here. He and his receiver, Quentin Andrews, not sure exactly what they're doing. Gets picked off. Rich Rodriguez and his squad, a roller coaster season. Had the BCS hopes dashed, flirted with Alabama. In the end, he stays in Morgantown and they win. Michigan gave Wisconsin its only loss this season. The Badgers in the Capital One Bowl trying to slow down Darren McFadden. He's actually slowed a bit from an ankle injury from the SEC title game here. McFadden breaks free, but Jack Icaguano, the all-Big Ten defensive back from the Badgers, brings him down from behind, and Razorbacks would miss a field goal attempt. That was kind of an Achilles heel for them all season long. They're down 3 to nothing. Casey Dick hands off to Felix Jones, and he has got quicks. Set up your block and cut inside. Goodbye. As Coach Don and says, show them your taillights. Arkansas is up. Their rushing game was good. The Badgers' rushing game, negative five yards. P.J. Hill kept in check. So what do you do? You ball fake. John Stocko finds Andy Crooks. Big tight end rumbles down inside the Arkansas 25. One more look at this. As good a ball fake as you will see. Ball on hip. Check out Antoine Robinson. You got the ball? Who's got the ball? Oh, no. This is bad, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> Sets up a touchdown. Wisconsin's up 10-7. 
Same score, Stocko finds Travis Beckham. These guys hooked up more than 50 times during the regular season. Play reviewed, number nine got his foot in, inbound. Stocko, two touchdowns, two picks, 17-7. Early fourth, McFadden lines up at quarterback. What are you going to do? Him and Jones are just filthy together. They're unstoppable. They combined for 239 yards. It's now a three-point game, but Fred Bielema, the head coach of Wisconsin, said Arkansas news stations were saying Wisconsin hadn't played anybody, and certainly we use that as a motivational factor. Jason Chapman chases down Casey Dick for the sack. Fred Bielema gets the shower like a lot of the coaches are getting. That's a happy one. You'll take it, especially down in Florida where it's warm. First 12-win season in Wisconsin history, and it has been quiet. It has been underappreciated. They've also got the basketball team flying high up to fourth in the poll. Two teams combined 26-2 this season. Perfect in Madison. Camp Randall and the Kohl Center, two of the better venues in the land. It is mad up in Mad City. They're a great college town. Get me an order of Bloomin' Onions. Tasty Outback Bowl between Penn State and Tennessee. Joe Paterno in the coach's box. Injured Wield still not ready for the sidelines. Defensive coordinator Tom Bradley in charge down below. Coach Paterno said afterwards of the skybox, not much fun. Fun game to watch, though. Third quarter, tied at 10. Eric Ainge, Josh Briscoe. Referee's going to review the play. This would be a theme. And they rule that Briscoe does not have possession before he goes out of bounds, so the call is reversed, incomplete pass. Very next play, bad things happen. Very bad things, man. Ainge's pass is intercepted by Anthony Scarotto. First interception for Ainge in his last 137 passes. You gotta go back to the middle of October. Ensuing possession, third and 12, Anthony Morelli to Derek Williams, sideline first down. We need to see that again. And the re re replay shows that the back of Williams' heel came down out of bounds. The call overturned, incomplete pass, and Penn State would later punt. Early fourth quarter, still tied at 10. Bartender, Foster, Arian Foster. Oh, we've got spillage. <laughs> Tony Davis began the season with four tackles. So needless to say, this is, this is his biggest play as a collegiate. 88 yards, Penn State up 16-10. Coach Paterno says, that's my boy. Tennessee fans say, hey, Foster was down. No, he wasn't. And they're going to review that. And telestration, you can see that the ball is coming out before the knees were down. The call on the field stands. It's a touchdown. Foster not happy, understandably. Penn State wins 20-10. 33rd bowl appearance for Joe Paterno. 27 this season trying to give their fans an opportunity to wrap Toilet paper down there in Toomer's Corner one last time. Nebraska's first January bowl game since 2001, the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, and they came out and methodically moved the ball down the field. Third and 19, Zach Taylor, Marlon Lucky, moved the chains. 15-play drive ends on a Taylor to Nate Swift touchdown, and the Huskers give their black shirt defense a 7-0 lead to work with. Just over two minutes left in the first, Nebraska third and three. Driving again, David Irons tips it. Karibi Didi gets it, and more. Eagle fly down the field. Well, he doesn't fly all the way to the end zone, but it would set up a Carl Stewart touchdown, and it's 7-7. Seven Second quarter, fourth and one. Coach, Coach Callahan. Oh, boy. They tried to get sneaky, and then it, it, it all went terribly wrong, didn't it? Tristan Davis recovers. Auburn takes over on the 15-yard line. They were held to under 200 yards of offense, but here, Brandon Cox and Courtney Taylor hook up, and Taylor lands awkwardly, and horrible to see those moments when you know that the guy's been knocked flat cold and Taylor was out, he would be okay. Carl Stewart would score his second touchdown immediately afterwards, and Auburn was up 14-7. to Now, they're up 17-14 to heading into the fourth, and they don't lose when you give uh, Coach Tubbs D the lead. Send Derek's mark to tackle on Zach Taylor. They're going into the win, couldn't kick the field goal. So, one last time, War Eagle, Auburn ends on a happy note.